So we're so glad that you're here today, and we've got a very interesting program for you from different centuries. We're starting with a piece by French composer Camille Sanson. You like my accent? <laughs> um, if you've never heard of him, you might know his Carnival of the Animals that's got the famous swan song in it that, that a lot of people like. <laughs> that for my poor imitation of a cello. Yeah, he wrote that and um, he also wrote an oboe sonata and we're going to play one movement from it, the middle movement, which has a, a kind of a slowish start where the oboe player gets to show off and pretty much take it away in her own time. And then we kind of gets up tempo a little bit and then we finish off with a, with a slower part at the end. So ladies and gentlemen, once again, Alton Grasty.
was Camille Saint-Saëns. Now to the, I guess, 20th century. Um, some of you may have heard of the film composer Ennio Morricone. He wrote a, a lot of famous things, and we're going to play a little tidbit from the movie The Mission called Gabriel's Oboe by Ennio Morricone. Um, I don't know if any of you have heard of the singer Sarah Brightman. Any Sarah Brightman fans? She was the original Christine in Phantom of the Opera, and she was married for a time to Andrew Lloyd Webber. Well, she's now off on her solo career, and I went to see her, goodness, it must have been about 25 years ago at Kentucky Center for the Arts, and um, she, before she performed a certain song, she said, I heard this piece, this very beautiful tune, that's how she talks, by Ennio Morricone, and I thought it would make a lovely song. So I asked him if I could sing it, and he said no. But I kept asking, and eventually he said yes. And it became the song that she's also quite well known for, called Nella Fantasia. If you've ever heard that, it's the same tune we're about to play. Beautiful. Now, the next piece we're going to do is by a composer you will have be forgiven for never, ah, get my words together, <laughs> never having heard of. It's quite all right if you haven't. Edmund Rubra. Show of hands, who's heard of him? Yeah, that's that's what I thought. He's <laughs> he's kind of a, a forgotten composer in a way. He he was a British composer. He's from my my motherland. And he died in, I think, the mid-80s, so he was active for a large part of the 20th century. And um, actually, his student, one of his students, was by the name of Raymond Dodd, and Raymond Dodd was my teacher. So there was kind of a little bit of a link. And then to be even cooler, Rubber's teacher was none other than Gustav Holst, who wrote the Planet Suite. So there was a very, very tenuous link between me and Holst, and I'm very proud of that, even though it's completely meaningless. <laughs> yeah, so anyway, Edmund Rubra, um, he wrote very beautiful music. Um, he wrote a lot of symphonies, and they're worth checking out. He's been described as the forgotten symphonist, that um, people just don't listen to him anymore, and I think they should. It's beautiful, beautiful music. 
So we're going to do two movements from his sonata for oboe and piano. The first movement is kind of reasonably upbeat, and then the second movement is kind of a little slower. His music kind of sounds like it should be telling a story. And he was asked one time, is that the case? He says, well, no, not really. He said, I don't ever have anything in my mind like a story about what's going on. I just like to leave it up to the listener to decide. It's just music, he said. It goes places, it does things. It goes happy, it goes sad, it goes fast, it goes slow. So you can kind of make up your own movie, if you like, as to what's happening. So this is Rugra's Sonata for Oboe and Piano. <laughs> sorted out because this one's a beast. <coughs>
Ruben Rubra. Go check him out on YouTube. You'll enjoy his music if you like that even the least little bit. And we're finishing off with um, something back to the 1700s, a bit of Haydn, his oboe concerto, and I'm going to be playing the whole orchestra all by myself. <laughs> Actually, no, it's common to have what they call piano reductions, where someone takes the orchestra part and makes it playable on a piano, and that's what I've been doing. Incidentally, there's just been a bit of question raised as to whether Haydn actually wrote this thing. Because apparently a catalogue was found that had his works in and it wasn't listed, whereas it was in other catalogues. So, but we're going to still say it's him because it's really cool. And he's dead anyway, so <laughs> he deserves it. Well, um, Autumn just takes a, a quick little break. That's an oboe she's playing. It is called a, it's a double reed instrument, right, Autumn? Why is it called a double reed instrument? Mm -hmm. So the oboe doesn't have a mouthpiece. It has two pieces of cane that are tied together um, with a piece of string. Um, you probably notice that I'm kind of have to have to blow out my ear before I blow it before I can take another breath. This is the same thing as if you were to hold your breath for however long you hold your breath, and then you have to breathe out before you can breathe back in. I can't fit a whole lot of air through this, um, so. If you notice that I have to blow out, that's why. Um, I just don't, I can't get a lot of volume of air through this. Yeah, thank you. There is another double reed instrument in the orchestra. If anyone can name what it is, you get a free cookie. <laughs> Pally knows. <laughs> it's the bassoon. Yeah, and Jenny at the back plays it. She's been learning it for the last couple of years. And she's doing great on it. Uh, yeah, it's a, it has a reed very similar to that, right, Pally? Kind of looks similar, bigger, I think, though. But yeah, those are the two double reed instruments you get in an orchestra. Interesting, bagpipes are also double reeds, but their reeds are hidden inside pipes so you don't see them, and you don't have to stick them in your mouth. You just blow through a pipe. That's probably why it's called bagpipes, because there's a bag and there's pipes. <laughs> I'll shut up now. Let's play the high note.
Thank you.